I got a right and a reason to be angry. And if I wasn't, I couldn't live with myself. And I don't know how so many people out there, oh well, that's just too bad. Jesus said the poor you will always have, did he? Did he? And who did he say he wants to take his place? So just remember that. When you, you have that attitude toward the poor among you, remember whose attitude, who you really have that attitude against. You have that attitude against Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Okay, the sinless, the unblemished, spotless Lamb of God. That's who we're talking about here. So you better change your attitude. All that crime out there that they want to be maintained because it's job security for so many people. Okay? Figure, see through it, folks. Call the bluff. Say, no, I want to end poverty. And crime's going to drop 90% because the vast majority of crime is committed because of financial tyranny, financial insecurity, financial desperation. It's been invented. It's been foisted on us. They, they plan shortages. It's artificial shortages. All we've got is price fixing, which is the opposite of free market supply and demand. In other words, we could triple the amount of housing in America, and still you'd see rent skyrocket, still you'd see housing prices go. How does, how does that in any way, shape, or form smack a supply and demand free market capitalism? It doesn't, because it's not there. It's just a lie for the pit of hell. And at this point in history, it's less excusable exponentially less excusable than any other time in history because we're supposed to learn an iota we're supposed to progress what is wrong with humanity yeah I'm talking to myself as well I'm talking to you out there because sometimes I get I get lost in the malaise I get despondent and I engage in in dark behavior because I know I'm running man I want to escape I want to take some control over my life and I do it in self-destructive ways like so many of you, like we all find some way to deal with things, you know? And we've got to get away from it, folks. And it's all very simple. It's all very simple. And you just got to understand basic economic principles. Look it up. Look it up. Key it in. Define supply and demand. And if I'm making anything up, so help me God, strike me dead. Because I'm not. I know what I'm talking about here. And I know that we've got to put our foot down and demand justice because people are dying. It is a life and death thing, man. The only reason people are dying in the world because they got to drink filthy water. Even in our neighbor to the south, I'm in America, down to the south in Mexico. <coughs> I drank the water once when I was a young teenager. And I got dysentery like you wouldn't believe. And that's our neighbor to the south where they've got more billionaires than we have in America filthy water. Why? Because we don't have the technology to just take water right out of the ocean to purify it. Look what they're doing in Israel. And in San Diego they turn sewer water into potable water. Not that I would drink it, but it's certainly good for irrigation and a lot of other purposes. People aren't dying of hunger in the world because there's a shortage of food. Okay? People aren't doing stupid crimes out there, committing stupid crimes, because it's fun. They're doing it because they're scared and they're desperate. And it's all they know how to do. And people aren't going off to war and killing people and getting killed because they think it's, uh, it, it's not a serious situation. But all this stuff stems from us accepting unsound currency. And that's where we got to put our foot down. And this is what pr our president, John F. Kennedy, tried to give the American people because he knew if America could have sound currency, if we could have a rising tide of prosperity across the board because the labor class is every bit and very much more important if you're going to start weighing importance. I mean, what is the education? What's that? What do we care? What's all the innovation? What's all our great learning brought us? We've got, we've got a greater disparity today between the haves and have-nots than ever before in history. Poverty is still exploding all around us. The hope of the poor is getting less and less. It seems more and more ridiculous to ever think you're going to get ahead. Here in California, uh, less than half the people are homeowners. And that's, that figure is increasing. That disparity is increasing. It's going to sweep across the nation and across the world. And what is the greatest measure of uh, prosperity traditionally is home ownership. You understand, folks, the whole thing is a scam from the pit of hell. 
The whole thing is just made up a charade from the pit of hell. And we're all told to believe in it. Somehow, the people telling you, the mainstream media and your professors, your peers, your family, your friends, your associates, they're telling you, oh, somehow it all makes sense. And that guy is a nut. He doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Well, I'm here to tell you, God has not given me a spirit of timidity, but of a sound mind and love and power. That's what he has given me. I know what I'm talking about. I've researched this subject because I'm interested in getting to the bottom of problems. Why? Why they persist? Why they flourish? I want to know. I've studied criminology. I know why the problems persist. I know why the crimes <coughs> proliferate out there. Because there's people inventing them. They invent problems. What's a false flag operation? It's a frame-up job. It's just a way that somebody can tell you, hey, you know what, we need to go to war against these people because look what they did, they attacked us. So let's go to war. And so it's real good for the stock market. And how the stock market, how does that make its money? It makes its money off the backs of the working class, the productive among us. So most people out there are just leeches. Who are they leeching off? They're leeching off the workers. The workers who go to work, they don't even feel wanted or needed. Okay, because of Obamacare, so many employers are reducing their, you know, they're cutting their work, their, their, their employees work in half. So people are having to find two jobs so that the, the, the employers have found a loophole in the Obamacare law. And then you're on your own, you've got to pay for it on your own. So Obama is saying he's not going to raise the taxes on the poor when the cost of living for the poor has gone up. Uh, what does it matter if your cost of living goes up, you, inflation, your, your burden goes up, whether it's taxes okay from a governmental source and who's the government It's supposed to be you and me or if it's from a private source it doesn't matter an iota and they talk about taxes do you know the original reason for taxes it was a, it was like a tithe a ten percent to care for the poor that's the only way they could get it to fly in the first place and but look at us in this day and age okay March 2014 and we're still going along with this and we're not objecting in mass and saying no, 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 no. No more people are going to die out in the cold. No many people are going to go hungry in this world unnecessarily. Nobody in this world is going to die from drinking filthy water. We're sick of you liars, you cheaters, you thieves, you murderers. We're sick of you and you're all going to hell. Okay, because that's all I got up my sleeve is warning you as a friend, as a brother. I'm telling you that you're headed straight for hell and I'm your best friend. I'm the guy that could save your life and not just your mortal life, your eternal soul. Okay? Because if you think that you're just going to die today and have bought and sold into this system and say, well, you know what? I just went along to get along. You know what? You don't have to answer to me, but there's one you're going to stand before, your maker. The one that owns your very soul. Not just your body, but your soul. And that's the one you're going to answer to. And he's not going to buy a lot of psycho babble rolling around in your head or my head or anybody else's head. So you better know very clearly how a perfect world is going to work. And so I'm imploring everybody out there, use your imagination, your God-given imagination. How will it work? Because it's like oil and water. We cannot live with this false God anymore. When this earth is cleansed up and it goes to the meek and the righteous, just like Jesus said, the meek shall inherit this earth, money is going to have zero zip nada, no role at all whatsoever, okay, because it's all about magic and advantage. One group, one individual has advantage over another. It cannot be like that. When we serve one another, it's going to be purely voluntarily. Okay, it's going to be because we darn well want to, for whatever reasons, because our conscience dictates that. And in order for us to be happy, we have to listen to our conscience. That's our connection to God. It's like our connection to His Holy Spirit. And God gives that Holy Spirit that connection to anybody that asks. If you need help in imagining how a world will work so you can begin cultivating that kingdom of heaven within you, just ask. God gives good gifts. He doesn't hide His character. He doesn't hide his nature, his personality. He wants to share it. He wants us to emulate him, to be like him. So he can't do things in secret. It's all laid out there for us all to understand. Okay, so we can learn. 
how a world will work without money and it's going to be great. And all the things that bug me today, all these various and sundry evils out there, I got to put up with them spraying the sky, these chemtrails, and no accountability. The mainstream media talk, never talks about the health effects from this crap. All the GMO in the food, the fluoride, all this stuff would go away. You understand you disincentivize, disincentivize these evildoers, these mad scientists and the evil geniuses. They don't have any more incentive. You understand? Because they're no longer working for advantage, for monetary gain, okay? Because there's nothing there. They can have whatever they want freely. But if they want someone to serve them, if they want somebody to go clean up their 30-room mansion, well, you might have a problem because you're going to have to have a lot of people that love you to go in there and be dust in shelves all day, okay? Because there's not going to be any hypocrites in, in a perfect world. There's not going to be any elitists. Nobody living on a, on a double standard and saying, somehow, you know, all this makes sense. I know. I mean, it's just, just, it just too uh, ubiquitous. You know, money, everybody knows. You know what? Everybody loves money. That's logical. That's common sense. I was at my gro local grocery store here the other day, and, you know, I, I made a remark to the cashier about it. And, you know, I, I said, uh, hey, you know what? Uh, you know, it's about loving money. He said, you know, I love money. You know, and this is people's attitude prevalent. It's very common that people love money. And even myself, I could see my own temptation to love money because of the security it brings me to know I get to pay my bills. And I know that if I'm struggling financially, I'm scared. I'm insecure. It's the way the God of this world and these controllers of this money supply, this God, okay, how they usurp their perverted form of reverence because reverence and fear have a direct correlation. You got to understand because that's insecurity and they like that. You serve me well, you do what I say, you trust me, you believe in me, you have faith in me, and all this I will give you. It's like Jesus before the devil, you know, offering him the whole world if he would bow down and worship him. It's that same kind of thing today. The same kind of thing today. Okay? And we have to all learn very well what these people at the top have planned. All this, oh, the earth's overpopulated. And we got to clean it up. We got to get rid of over 85% of the people. Now they're, you know, how, much, how often you hear the mainstream media pointing out the Georgia Guidestones, what these people have planned. So if you think I'm an alarmist, if you think I'm just making random stuff up to scare people, okay, think again. You look up the Georgia Guidestones. You see what they have planned. And if you want to keep your head buried in the sand, go for it. But don't say nobody warned you. If you ever listen to my videos, you'll see you've been warned. You've been warned. These people want to get their population reduced dramatically. Do they offer to kill themselves? Oh, no, because they're more so important. You know, they believe they're doing God's work. Well, they usurp Mother Nature right and left. Every which way from Sunday, they're usurping Mother Nature. They're destroying us in, in all sorts of ways. And they affect my mood. And that, to me, is a form of mind control. Man, when I got to look up in the sky and see these idiots spray in the sky, with no accountability for the health effects on the public, okay? I don't know what they're spraying up there, and the mainstream media sure not telling me. Are they releasing biological weaponry? I have no idea, do I? So I trust God. I say, let your will be done, God. But all I know is that these people are going to hell on a rocket, and they are going to meet their day of reckoning, and hopefully, sooner than later, that day is coming up. Because I am sick and tired that the humanity, decent humanity, needs some relief. Okay, we need some relief and it's in, in the form of getting these people off our backs and the only way I can think of to do it that I've ever stumbled upon is through sound currency. Your money is never supposed to be worth less tomorrow than today. It's always supposed to be worth more and if you ever hear somebody citing shortages and that's the reason for raising the price of your cost of your cost of living, your, why you have inflation, why gas went up, why food went up, why housing costs went up. You call their bluff and you say, that's bull. Then let's go to rationing. But if there's a shortage of housing and that's why somebody's got to die out in the cold tonight, you say, prove it to me because I'll tell you you're a liar and you're going to hell. And if you tell me that somebody's starving to death because there's a shortage of food in the world, I'll call you a liar. I'll call you a bluff. And on and on and on. If you tell me because we got to have the crime because they're just criminal minds out there and there's nothing we can do. I'll say you end poverty and you prove to me what you're saying is true because you're a liar and you're going to hell. That's what I'm going to tell you. You got that? So anyhow, I'm going to wrap this video up and I hope everybody got an earful out there. 
Now, that's important. You know, you might say, hey, this guy gets a little manic. You know, you're right, I do. And maybe it's like Shakespeare said, we're all actors on a stage, but I'm trying to be God's hands and feet, eyes and ears on the ground, and trying to jar people awake, trying to provoke thought in them.